How did it come around that you finally got to work at Stratford? Um, I was really fortunate, and I was asked by Richard if I would play Juliet and Romeo and Juliet. And I was, I was pregnant at the time when he asked me with my first child. And, um, and so I thought I had to think about that. I knew she was, my daughter was born in December. So I, I, when I went to Stratford, I, my daughter was six weeks old. And I said, well, let me, I, I need to just, I, let me have my baby and see how I felt. And as soon as the baby was born, yeah, I'm going to Stratford. I would love to play Juliet. <laughs> you know. Um, and I was terrified. I was terrified. What an extraordinary opportunity. What a, uh, a gift. I was uh, extremely lucky to be asked to play in Romeo and Juliet. And obviously it was because of my success with Anne um, that I was asked to go. Um, and uh, I certainly hadn't earned it from my, I had done theater, some theater before, but not very much. And I had never done Shakespeare. Um, and all of that was uh, certainly daunting, but I was uh, hungry for that experience. And uh, Stratford, you know, if, for those of us who, uh, for us in Canada, and particularly for those who, who have a love of, of theater, who've grown up in that, really Stratford represent, it's like the kind of the pinnacle of, the, the, of that experience. And, um, as I was saying, it, it brings up a lot of strong feelings, Stratford. People are very rarely um, neutral about their feelings about it. And for me, it had a great part of my childhood. My parents were married in Stratford. My, um, my, so it, it had Stratford as a place and, uh, and as a theater and as a theatrical community meant a lot. So it was, uh, I had a fantastic time. Go through the various stages. Uh, what was perhaps most terrifying, playing Juliet, <laughs> doing Shakespeare, or acting on that stage? Um, playing Juliet, the idea of playing Juliet wasn't terrifying. I, it was intimidating. It was intimidating. Um, to do Shakespeare was um, terrifying. It wasn't really terrifying. I mean, it was, it was again, daunting. and um, And... I think I, I had to give myself a break because not having been classically trained and have not, having not gone to theater school, um, I really was setting myself up for an experience uh, one way or the other, but I was, I was determined to have it and I wanted it very badly. So I was willing to uh, succeed or fail, come what may, I was going to take this chance. Um, and I was, I said, was, felt extremely grateful to have it. I loved playing Juliet. I loved playing Juliet. I, I just, that ho her whole journey in that piece, and that particularly from the second act on, and that her, <laughs> for lack of a more graceful word, balls that that young woman had to take her destiny in her hands and make a choice and, and to, 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 to play with that sort of degree of uh, when the stakes are, are life and death and that absolute passion and love and um, I always loved the poison, that, that whole moment of, of that decision, her quandary of taking the poison. Um, after all of that sheer determination to do something and then that moment of uh, what does this actually mean now that I have this moment in my hand. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault, to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in, and there die strangled ere my Romeo comes? Or if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terror of the place, where bloody Tybalt, yet but green in earth, lies festering in his shroud, where, as they say, at some hours of the night, spirits resort? Alack, alack, is it not like that I, so early waking, what with loathes and smells and shrieks, like mandrakes torn from the earth, that living mortals hearing them run mad? Oh, if I wake, shall I not be distraught, environed with all of these hideous fears, and madly play with my forefather's joints, and pluck the mangled tibble from his shroud, and in this rage with some great kinsman's bones, as with a club, dash out my desperate brains? <gasps> 
Look. Methinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo that did spit his body upon a rapier point. Stay, Tybalt, stay. Romeo, Romeo, Romeo. His drink, I drink to thee. And I, I, it was thrilling. It was absolutely thrilling to play that part and thrilling to be on that stage. It's such a, um, to be in such a, a huge space and, and to have it be so intimate, because I think it's something like 65 feet from the farthest seat in that theater. Um, and I know they've made it smaller now, which is good, because it was pretty yeah. expanded, and that was tough. Um, what did that feel like the first time you were out there with an audience around you? Because some actors say that that's the real shocker, not just stepping on the bare stage when you oh, step absolutely. on the stage and the people are out there. Do you recall that first performance you did? Must have been a student matinee, I would imagine, was it? It must have been. Um, you know, all I can think of is, is, is my heart pounding. Is, it would have been sort of the reverberation of my heart pounding through my ears. Uh, and the sheer sort of adrenaline. I think what I have always loved about being doing theater and uh, particularly, obviously, a, a production like that is that you are so, you can't afford to not be anywhere but in that moment because it, it, that, every moment is so full, it, particularly with that relationship you have with the audience and, the, and their movement as this sort of individual mass of energy that you're, you're bouncing off of. And I remember it was Helen Burns, actually, who said to me uh, to think of the audience as every head in the, in the, that you sort of vaguely see out in the audience as cells in your brain, as individual cells in your own brain, that you're, so when you're, you're communing with them, you're, you're really, it's really, with, you're with yourself and they're a part of you and it's going out of yourself into them and, and it really was that feeling, it was a bigger than life feeling, I mean it's addictive, what can I say, <laughs> it's, it's a, an absolute rush in the best sense of uh, of that w meaning of that word. To go back to when you started rehearsals, how did Richard Minette approach the part with you? Did he, what did he ever tell you about Juliet or? I remember having an incredible amount of fun with Richard. I remember that he really took me under his wing and he was very uh, gentle with me and he was very caring and he knew that I needed a lot of attention, uh, specifically because I didn't know what I was doing with regards to the, the the classical word. Um, and I remember it was very intimate, which was actually the, was like the best way to do it. And the transition then from, from that into the sort of filling the space was another stage in that process. But because that was the world that was familiar to me, the, the, the world that's familiar to me is living in make-believe and, and really living that. And that acting to me, whether you're on a stage or in front of the camera, is really about in possessing, inheriting, and filling and living that world and making it real. So it doesn't really matter what medium it, that's coming through in. And that, so that I, I, I was, I've always loved to do. I've always been a big daydreamer. I've had a very rich inner life. What can I say? <laughs> so it's great to work as an actor because then you actually, instead of being in the nut house, you actually have a profession and you can 